really all the evidence that remains of the second and most important invasion in the story of the English language, the Anglo-Saxon invasion. I'm in the British Museum, and this is the Sutton Hall exhibit. Archaeologists excavated these items from what's known as the Sutton Hoo ship burial on the east coast of England in 1938. Scholars were amazed to find that these objects and the boat itself matched the descriptions of ships and weapons found in Beowulf. Although from the Romans we can see Hadrian's Wall, remnants of villa floors with ornate mosaics, forts, public baths, modern roads still following the same paths laid out by the Romans, little remains of Anglo-Saxon society. In London, if you go into the lower level of a little church called All Hallows by the Tower, you'll see a single stone archway built by the Anglo-Saxons. Throughout Britain are a few other bits of structures, mostly churches from the late Anglo-Saxon era. When the Anglo-Saxons came to Britain, they were a pagan warrior society. It's not surprising that many of the artifacts from the time period are swords or other weapons or pieces of armor. Other artifacts were items used in everyday life, such as this cooking pot that would have hung from the rafters in the Great Hall. Items such as this jewelry and these coins remind us of the dragon's hoard in Beowulf, or perhaps of the gift-giving motif in much Anglo-Saxon literature in which the king gives treasures to his loyal retainers. Because the Anglo-Saxons were illiterate, they had no recorded literature, but they had a rich tradition of oral literature. At night in the Mead Hall, they passed a harp like this one around the tables, taking turns playing and chanting or singing stories about brave heroes and their superhuman deeds, stories like Beowulf. Although we have so few physical objects from the Anglo-Saxon culture, they left us the most important legacy of all, the English language. It's in a, uh, what I believe is an Aeolian scale. It's kind of like a, a natural minor, but I find it, the more I experiment with it, the more I find that it works really well for the medieval music. And it starts out on a D. And that's kind of what it sounds like. And so I'm going to play a song for you called Bear Dance. It's a medieval tune. Normally it was originally made for lute, but I find it works well on this. So here we go.
There you have it, Anglo-Saxon harpa.